Hi, welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I teach at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. Today I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for second graders. But as always, everyone, kids, adults, everybody is welcome to learn with us. So today I will be reading um, a book called The Boy Who Was Raised by Librarians by Carla Morris um, with the permission from Peachtree Publishing Company Incorporated. All right, we are back for more character work. Sorry, I need a little drink. My brain needs this. You know what I'm gonna ask you to do next, right? As always, I'm gonna ask you to find a spot that is good for both your brain and your body so that we can get started learning today. We have another awesome book to read. Maybe Molly will make a guest appearance today. She was feeling a little silly yesterday and then when I tried to like grab her to bring her up to say hi, um, she wanted to play and she was barking and wah, she was crazy. So, um, of course she is under the table where she always is while I'm recording no matter what I do. I've tried to lock her out of the room, like lock myself into this room, but then she stands outside the door and barks the whole time. So this is what we get. She's under the table. Molly, come here. Molly. See, she's ignoring me. And she comes out and makes her appearance when she feels like it. So that's where we are. Um, she is her mother's daughter. She knows what she wants. So I, um, I hope you're doing well. I am so happy to be back in school and be with um, amazing teachers and be with amazing students. And um, I really hope the year is going well for you. So grab your handy dandy paper and your handy dandy pen. And if you can't tell, I feel like a little like, woo, like my brain is not focused. So let's do some stretches because I, ooh, I'm definitely not focused. My back. Oh, yes. Some deep breaths. Did you know when you need to take a deep breath, you like naturally raise your hands above your head and you'll take a deep breath? Yeah, it, it works. It's crazy. I feel a little more focused now. So, we are going to continue our character work today. So, I will be able to use context clue, clues to figure out unknown words, and I will be able to analyze a character's feelings, words, and actions. Um, the second goal up there is really what we will spend majority of our time on. We're going to go over vocabulary in just one second. Um, so don't forget, we have talked about these strategies. And if you're just joining us for the first time, that's totally fine. And we're going to show you what these are like. So we can learn about our characters by studying their actions, their feelings, their words. We can learn about them by studying the way that they react to problems or any situation that is happening in their books or in their in the story. And we can also learn about them by studying the way that they interact or talk to um, other people. All right. So this book I really enjoy and it's The Boy Who Was Raised by Librarians. So I'm wondering, do you know what a librarian is? Anybody can tell me? Yes, a librarian is someone who works 
at a library and um, you can actually get a degree as a librarian. Um, you have to know something that's called the Dewey Decimal System and it's how all the books are organized in the library. Uh, it's very interesting. And libraries are generally pretty quiet so people can study and focus. Um, in college, I used to go to the library a lot to study uh, when I had to get a lot of work done, or sometimes I did that in between classes as well. Um, as a little girl, I went to the library all the time. Um, my parents always took me to the library. And as an adult, I also, I still go to the library. I do buy a lot of my books, um, but there are a lot of books that I get from the library. To be honest, it really depends on if Mr. Wright is making me follow our budget. And if he is, then I'm checking out books from the library more. If he's not, I'm just buying them on Amazon. And, you know, whatever. But I, there are certain authors that I love so much that I always buy their books no matter what. Like the Harry Potter series, I, I have all of those. Um, I'm, I'm rambling, but librarians are amazing and they're super, super, super helpful. That's gonna come up in our, in our book. So let's talk about um, a couple of things. So first of all, the title of this is The Boy Who Was Raised by Librarian. So raised by, so I put that on here first. What does it mean to be raised by? Well, raised by is um, how you were taken care of, um, whoever, what is that? Whoever was the one um, who you lived with and took care of you. So I was raised by my mom and my dad. Um, my husband was raised by his mom. Some people are raised by their grandma and grandpa. Some people are raised by their aunt and their uncle. So it's whoever takes care of you as you're a kid growing into a, t well, teenager and then a teenager into an adult. So sometimes the person who you're raised by might change, right? So um, that's what raised by means. Reference desk. So a reference desk is a place in a library um, that you go to ask questions. Um, actually, there are reference desks, not just in libraries, like at the zoo. The zoo has a reference desk. Um, keystroke. So when you're typing on a computer that has a keyboard, when you're moving from like one letter to another, that's called a keystroke. Specimens. Specimens um, are a sample of something. Um, or, yeah, that's pretty much what it's, it is, a specimen. That's the best way to explain it. You might you might hear someone say that it's like um, the smallest form of an animal or like one of that kind of animal. That's another way of saying it too. Aquarium. So an aquarium, if you've ever been to one, an aquarium is like a big tank. They can be super, super big or super, super small. And it's filled with water and it's a place where generally fish live. Um, bouquet, bouquet, I actually don't know if it's bouquet or bouquet, and I probably should have Googled this first, and I honestly think it depends on where you're from, if it's bouquet or bouquet. A bouquet of flowers, a bouquet of flowers, I don't know, but anyways, look, I have some right here. A bouquet, bouquet of flowers. Should have looked it up. Okay, um, and then our last vocabulary word is encyclopedias, which actually, I don't know that I've used an encyclopedia in a long time, but encyclopedias were basically Google before there was Google. So you had encyclopedias, there would be like Encyclopedia A, Encyclopedia B, Encyclopedia C. And if you wanted to learn about something, instead of Googling it, you would go to an encyclopedia. So like if I wanted to learn about Harriet Tubman, I now would Google about Harriet Tubman, but I could also go to an encyclopedia and find T for Tubman, 
last name, then first name. And I would go to the section with T in the book T in the alphabetical order and find Tubman, Harriet, and read about her. So encyclopedias are basically Google, okay? Okay, so the boy who was raised by librarians. Remember, this reading um, is with permission from Peachtree Publishing Company Incorporated. Thanks, Peachtree. Melvin lived in the public library. Well, he didn't really live there. He just spent lots and lots of time there. Everything has its place in the library. And Melvin likes it that way. His favorite people, Marge, Betty, and Leola, are always in their places behind the reference desk. When something interests Melvin, the librarians help him find the very best information on the subject. When he collects creepy bugs in a jar, they help him identify, classify, and catalog them. When he is in a in oh blue. When he is cast as the enormous eggplant in the school play, they help him find his motivation. Melvin can always find the answers to his questions and a lot of fun in the library. Then one day he goes off to college to learn things and read new books. Will he leave the library and his friends forever behind? Mm -hmm. The boy who was raised by librarians. Melvin lived in the Livingston Public Library. Well, he didn't really live there. He just spent lots of time there. If you see him in the corner there, he's super little. He wanted to know a little, no, a lot about everything. He was curious, and the library is a wonderful place to be if a person is curious. Everything had its place in the library, and Melvin liked it that way. His favorite books were always in their places, lined up on the shelves like soldiers. And his favorite people were always in their places, behind the reference desk. When Melvin was barely tall enough to see over the counter, he started going to the library after school every day. He made sure to stop by the reference desk for a chat with the librarians. They were always happy to see him. Hi, Melvin, Marge said. How was school today? Betty asked. How's the weather out there? Asked Leola. Melvin loved the librarians. Whenever he, whatever he was interested in, they were interested in it too. So I'm noticing some things over here. His action, his feelings, his interaction with others. So he likes whenever there, um, he has interaction with people. He likes being around people. He likes that these three librarians care about him. So that tells me that he is what people might say a people person. He likes being around people. Where can I find some information about snakes? He asked one afternoon. Oh, and also I was thinking if he's someone who goes to the library every single day, he probably really likes to learn, right? That's an action. He's doing it over and over again. Where can I find some information about snakes? He asked one afternoon. Well, said Marge, how would you like to raise a snake all by yourself? Here's a great book. Raising snakes in your bathtub, from cute baby racers to big, ugly cobras. Betty chimed in. Here, dear, an arts and crafts book, making snakeskin purses, shoes, and other matching accessories. Hey, snake poems and blessings, added Leola, as she found 42 snake websites with just three keystrokes. That's how librarians are. They just can't help it. And that's why Melvin loved them. In first grade, Melvin and his class went on a field trip to a real field. That afternoon, he ran to the library to show his friends his treasure, a big mason, mason jar filled with all kinds of bugs. Look what I have here, he called as he burst through the library doors. Can you help me identify them? Melvin, don't run in the library. Melvin tripped and the jar sailed across the room. That means like it flew across the room. All 87 specimen 
of caterpillars, cooties, and creepy crawlies were loose in the Livingston Public Library. Man. Marge, Betty, and Leola quickly organized an emergency rescue squad. The bugs were retrieved, identified, classified, and cataloged within 20 minutes. How'd you do that so fast? Explained, oh, asked Melvin. That's how we are, explained Leola. When we see chaos, began Betty, we organize and catalog, finished Marge. It's in our nature. She pulled out a field guide to insects and handed it to Melvin. Hmm. So the librarians, they could have been super angry here with Melvin because he was running in the library. He broke a glass jar that made 87 bugs go everywhere. But guess what? They weren't mad at him at all. They helped him gather the bugs and do what he wanted to do, which was to classify them, sort them, and figure out exactly the kind of bugs that they are. So this interaction tells me that they care about each other. The librarians care about Melvin as much as Melvin cares about them, right? And once again, it's showing me his words, his actions. He's curious. He came running into the library. He was so, so excited to find out what these bugs were. Um, so that tells me he's curious. I need a drink of water, hang on. Do a little stretching. Okay, here we go. To apologize, Melvin gave the librarians a lovely bouquet of flowers picked from the library's garden. Then he stopped to examine the aquarium next to the circulation desk. Don't put your hands in the fish tank, Marge warned him. But I was wondering, said Melvin, how many kinds of fish are in the whole world in all the lakes and all the river lakes and all the rivers and all the seas? And how much does the whole world with all the dogs and cats and houses and cars and tractors weigh? The librarians were very busy with other patrons. That means other people in the library. But Leola knew just where to find some answers from Melvin. She sat down at the computer with Melvin and they found the answers together. She couldn't help it. That's just how librarians are. Again, he's very curious. I've never wondered those things. In second grade, Melvin was cast as the enormous eggplant in the school play. He practiced his part with the librarians. Now, say your line again, said Leola as she shelved the new Caldecott Award winners. Project your voice to the back of the auditorium, said Marge, in an alarmingly loud and clear voice. But be natural, said Betty. Try to look like you're not acting. She read aloud from Organic Gardening Magazine to help him find his motivation. The audience gave the enormous eggplant a standing ovation. But look at his face right there. How do you think, he's showing us his feelings. And what do you think those feelings are? And he's giving us an action. And he hasn't really said a whole lot. Yeah, I think he's probably like, why am I doing this? But they helped him out so much, he got a standing ovation. That means the crowd stood up and clapped for him because he did such a good job. Melvin attended all the library programs. He was always the first person to complete the summer reading program. He loved the after school specials and the reader guys book club and movie nights. He came to all the story hours, no matter the hour. But the spend the night at the library party was the best. But he read the kids a bedtime story. Melvin curled up in his sleeping bag near the encyclopedias. Surrounded by thousands of books, he felt rich and happy. Hmm. Surrounded by thousands of books, 
he felt rich and happy. So the book is giving us a feeling right now. He felt rich and happy. What does that tell us about Mel? Yeah, right? That he truly loves to read. If being around books made him feel rich and he's a little kid who doesn't have money and happy, then he truly loves to read. Good job, friends. You guys are doing such a nice job analyzing this story. In third grade, Melvin started a baseball card collection. He would spread the cards out on a table in the library and organize them into teams, players, and rookies. Betty showed him how to store them in acid-free approved boxes, and Leola found him a price guide on the internet. They couldn't help it. That's just how librarians are. In fourth grade, Melvin entered the complete and unabridged A to Z spelling bee. Marge suggests that he read the 100th edition of Words to Know every day after school. Not surprisingly, he won first place. Look at them. Look at their faces, their actions. In fifth grade, Melvin won both the gold and the silver trophies in the Know Every Town, City, State, and County in the Solar System Geography Contest. Marge, Betty, and Leola were so proud of him, they couldn't help it. That's how librarians are. In sixth grade, Melvin entered the extraordinary, completely out of your mind science fair. The librarians helped him find information all about the projects that he had ever won. Melvin came up with a winner. In seventh grade, he was picked to be on, so you want to be the smartest kid? Marge, Betty, and Leola burst with pride as Melvin answered questions so fast that he blew out the circuits on the computer keeping score. Man, that means he was doing such a good job in answering questions so quickly that they couldn't keep up with getting the answers in and it overloaded the system. So I want you to study and think about what we've read on the last two pages. So he's getting older as the grades go on. He is in seventh grade right now and he's still is seeing these librarians every day and they are really helping him make awesome achievements at school and they're excited about it. You can tell by their faces. Every day after school, year after year, Melvin came to the library. When he was in high school, he even got a part-time job there. Marge, Betty, and Leola cried with pride and happiness at Melvin's graduation. That's our boy, said Marge. We helped him learn, said Betty. All those books, said Leola. After Melvin left for college, he missed the Livingston Library and his librarian friends. He wrote them letters and emails about the books he was reading and the things he was learning. an action, right? He's writing them letters. So that does show that he misses them and he probably wants to be back around them again. Years later, another boy came to the Livingston, Livingston Public Library and loved it. Hi, Sterling, Marge said. How was the field trip, Betty asked. Do you need help identifying those bugs? Asked Leola. Ooh, who do you think's up there? We can identify, organize, and catalog in no time. We can't help it, said Livingston's newest librarian. That's how we are. Who is it? Who is the newest librarian? You're right, it's Melvin. So this is a big action from Melvin. He went to college, came back, and worked at the library. That's a huge action, right? So what does that tell you about Melvin and the library? 
Let's write about it. This action makes me think What does this action of him coming back to work as an adult at the library tell you about Melvin? This action makes me think hear it. This action makes me think I agree. Yes. Those are some amazing thoughts. So my thought is that this action of him going away to college and then coming back and working at the library as an adult, this makes me think that those ladies the librarians, they helped Melvin um, figure out what he wanted to do as an adult, right? They helped him uh, grow and turn into an adult that loved reading and loved being at the library. All right? So, what a great book. I really enjoyed this one. And um, again, we'll be back at it tomorrow reading more about characters. I love teaching everything that I do through books. So if you love listening to stories and analyzing them, I'm your girl. So I will see you friends tomorrow. Bye. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.